cognitive psychology is really experiments in memory going back, really starting about 1875. Since about 1995, essentially 21st century, um, scientists are able to look inside the brain and see how various areas connect and see which areas get activated under various circumstances. And much of this has been going on really for 20 years now. Basically, neuroscience is validating cognitive psychology. Research sometimes shows that some popular concepts are not like that. I mean, there are neuromyths and there are cognomyths. Ideas, for example, that you can create, increase the creativity by brainstorming. Everybody thinks so. Well, maybe, but the research shows that if a few people sit around and start brainstorming, what they're doing is socially controlling each other. It's a whole lot better if you want to brainstorm as a group is for you to write everything you think about and everyone else write everything they think about and then they open the papers. Our memory is like the biggest bottle in the world. But to get to it, we need to see it has a very narrow neck. And that's what you would call working memory. And part of it is short-term memory. What you think right now is a very, very narrow time frame and has very narrow capacity. And yet we process what we think right now with this, this narrow frame. It may hold five items, seven items, four items, chunks of something for maybe five, you know, 10 seconds, 25 seconds, it depends. You have to bring in whatever they're asking you or talking right now, bring knowledge up from this, the fat part of the bottle, mix it all up and make some decision. All that within milliseconds. Education needs to prepare people to do this, that is, to be able to bring as much knowledge as is needed in a case within milliseconds and make the right decision about something. It is important for schools to train students in the basic skills to make them automatic. That is, you need to learn letter by letter, put them together with plenty of practice until you become automatic, and then you don't have to think about them. So learn, you know, reading doesn't take up much space in your working memory. Same thing about calculations. <clears throat> math. You need to have instant mental math. Instant automatized multiplication tables, divisions, the sense of length, the sense of the number line. And they need to have practice enough at these low levels to where they're automatic. And when they get, so you hear about two great sales of something, you know, of a new cell phone, and you're able to make a decision quickly, fuzzily, which one is the best deal, without, again, all the calculations taking up space in your working memory. So strategically, certain things need to be learned by heart in various languages and various you know, cultures so that you can bring it effortless into working memory. Technological tools help, but remember that to get to Wikipedia or Google, you have to be automatic in a lot of practices that you're not aware of because you're already automatic. This function of schools, particularly those early years, is to make you automatic so that you can go search. So the idea of, you don't need to learn this, you can always search it, uh, hides a an illusion, a memory illusion. Because you already know so much that that extra piece, you can search. If you knew much less, you couldn't possibly search. About testing in general, one important thing that, uh, one important piece of research is that testing you on something consolidates your memory, makes you remember the material better. And feedback, either immediate or delayed feedback, is actually very good. You shouldn't just get tested, you ought to get feedback on what you have been tested about. Studying to the test, well, if the, the skills are low level enough, studying to the test improves those skills. So doing reading and math, these things need to be tested, not just for the reasons for, of accountability, but because they're such basic skills that you really need to be, you know, they need to be taught, the students need to be taught to the test. There's nowhere else to go. Students need to have some discipline to study. Um, we are pressuring students to learn material that they don't yet see the utility of. And we're pressuring them because they're at a time in life when their brain is most efficient in consolidating that information. 20 years later, they may want to know that information, or they won't have the time, 
there's other things in life, but B also, we become, by age 40, we become fairly less efficient at retaining information that you know, a 10-year-old will retain and may retain for life, who doesn't see the point of it. So it's, educational systems have to deal with this tension. A child says, this is irrelevant to me. It is irrelevant to you right now, no doubt. But now you can learn it. Now you can automatize it. That's the crux, and that is the tension of educational system. We're forcing the young to learn stuff because they can do it now.